Hi guys, welcome to episode 11 of the Sack Race Weekly. Today we bring you the first Premier League casualty of the season, Slavin Bilic. He's left West Brom and he's been replaced by Sam Allardyce. We then move on to two manager markets, Bradford and Barrow, which have opened up in League Two. We're going to run through all the candidates for those jobs. Please do like and subscribe to the video and check out the sackrace.com for loads of content and also a few Christmas quizzes. Slavin Bilic has become the first managerial casualty of the Premier League season after West Brom sacked him following a draw with Man City. And Sam Allardyce is back as his replacement. A real swift change around there. Simon, he won promotion, led them up to the Premier League. They've just drawn with Man City. They previously drew with Chelsea, got their first win recently. Was this questionable timing, this sacking, or do you think uh, he fully deserved to go? I think it's very, very harsh indeed from West Brom. And I think Sam Allardyce was clearly lined up. I think Southern Village could have won that Man City game 4 or 5 nil, and he'd have still been sacked because it was a brilliant point and a pretty good performance at the Etihad from West Brom. But over the course of the season, West Brom have performed as you'd expect, I think. I don't think they've been awful. I don't think they've been brilliant. I think they're about average, about par where they should be. I think Bilic did an amazing job to get them promoted from the Championship last season. I think he's had a reasonable start in the Premier League. It just seems bizarre. It seems like West Brom have hit the panic button earlier than ever. And Allardyce is in before Christmas, which is something we don't see too often. Um, I think a lot of West Brom fans are pretty annoyed by this. They loved Bilic. They loved what he was doing to the club. He played a pretty good style of football as well, which he's probably not going to get with Allardyce. Uh, so the fact they've swapped him out, and a lot of West Brom fans have actually said they'd rather get relegated back to the Championship with Slavin Bilic in charge than stay up with Allardyce in the Premier League. So I think that tells you all you need to know. Relegation from the Premier League is seen as this massive disaster, and it seems like West Brom can't handle being relegated again. It's not the end of the world if you get relegated from the Premier League. We've seen with teams like Norwich this season back top of the Championship under Daniel Fart look likely to get promoted again. It's not the end of the world getting relegated from the Premier League. Is it the end of the world having Sam Allardyce as your manager? I mean, the style of football is definitely going to change and probably not for the better. So Sam Allardyce has signed an 18-month contract. It's Premier League job number eight. He's previously thrived at Bolton. He's kept the likes of Sunderland, Blackburn, Crystal Palace in the division. He improved Everton in position anyway. He stabilised West Ham. Can he keep West Brom in the division? Yeah, he probably will. I think Sam Allardyce will probably keep West Brom in the division because that's what he does. He's a brilliant manager at keeping teams in the Premier League. He's a brilliant manager at getting results when things are against him, when the backs are against the wall. He's lot the back line, you know, I think Ivanovic is going to become huge for West Brom under Sam Allardyce, Ajayi as well. There's some big and decent defenders in that team. He can make them solid. He can get them goals on the break. I expect Charlie Austin to start featuring a bit more as well. For West Brom so I think there's the makings of a Sam Allardyce team here and definitely the makings of a Sam Allardyce team that can stay in the Premier League. So of course he looked to sort out that defence which has leaked in quite a few goals and make them organised and disciplined, improve them all over the pitch, make them more efficient. So you, you said you, you think he can keep them in the league, if he does that do you think he'd then stay on and improve them next season or do you think the same old cycle will happen with West Brom? Uh, next season, I think he probably will stay on for a little bit, but I think you see the same old cycle with Sam Allardyce. Teams have enough of his football, they have enough of what he's trying to do, and staying in the Premier League ultimately isn't enough after a couple of seasons. So I think, unfortunately for Allardyce, he's not a long-term manager. We definitely saw that even when he got a chance at Everton. People don't want him around for too long. They want him to come in and do a job. He does the job and then they bin him off. So I think that's exactly what will happen here. So Slav and Bilic has gone. We're both gutted about that. But the market is reopened, the Premier League sack race market. Mikel Arteta, who we focused on in the previous show, check that out, is the 6-4 to four favourite. Now, ahead of Chris Wilder's 4-1, to one, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's 10-1, to one, so is Scott Parker, uh, Sean Dyche and Steve Bruce is around the 16-1 to one mark. Just quickly before we move on, Simon, I know we've chatted before, but... Is Mikel Arteta just a couple more defeat, defeats away from the sack or do you think this is a very much a long-term appointment for Arsenal? 
I'd like to think it's a long-term appointment. I mean, the result against Burnley was really poor, slightly improved against Southampton with that draw. I think it is a long-term appointment. It has to be. If they're sticking with him, they've got to give him to the end of the season. They're not going to get relegated. They're unlikely to make it to Europe. Just give him a bit of time and see what he can do because there's spells where Arsenal look really good on the ball, off the ball, but then there's just horrendous defensive errors and some horrendous some horrendous defending in general, I think, for Arsenal. Um, so I think it's got to be a long-term appointment for Arteta. He's got to be there for at least to the end of the season, even if they finish 12th or 13th. Let's give him a bit of time and see what he can actually do. If he's in a similar position this time next year, he's surely going to be out of a job. On to Section 2 now and down into League 2. Bradford City are looking for a new manager. Was it the right call to sack club legend Stuart McCall, who's left the club for a third time? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, being a club legend can only get you so far, I think, in the game. I do really like Stuart McCall. I know Bradford fans absolutely love him. He's a legend. But this season has been absolutely atrocious for Bradford. I think they've won one win in their last 12 league games. They've been absolutely awful. He was trying different formations, a 3-5-2 that didn't fit the players he has. And now they seem to have changed it around a bit and things are slightly improving. I'm, I'm very interested to see who they get in. But for me, McCall, it was definitely the right decision to let him go as much of a legend as he is at Bradford. Knowing McCall and Bradford, he'll probably be back in a couple of years anyway. The favourite to replace himself. We've, we've got the odds up on screen now. We've got Ryan Lowe. It's a surprise odds on favourite. Sol Campbell's in the mix. Paul Hurst is there, 8-1. to one. Graham Alexander, 14-1. to one. Jonathan Woodgate, 16-1. to one. Nigel Atkins, Danny Cowley, David Flitcroft. All the usual names in the mix. Simon, Ryan Lowe, he was 25-1 to one, um, originally for this, uh, for this job. He came in suddenly at 3-1, to 2-1. Two to one. Now he's odds on. We've seen him be linked with championship jobs because he's done such a good job with Plymouth previously and Berry got them both up to the uh, to League One, and now he's uh, just above the relegation zone with Plymouth. But are you surprised to see him linked with a job back down in League Two? Yeah, I don't understand it at all. To be honest, I don't understand where these odds have, have come from. Who's backing him to get this job? I personally don't see it happening. At all, I think he's a very good League One manager. He's actually, if you look at their recent results, Plymouth, his stock, if anything, is is dropping right now. But by no means that means he's going to get sacked at Plymouth or drop down over division and take the Bradford job. This is a really strange one for me. I really like Ryan Lowe. I like the football his team plays. I like the results he's got on the pitch for Plymouth for the most part, definitely last season. And this season they've done okay. Obviously, I think it's they've lost the last five in the league or something, which is really poor. One of the worst runs Lowe has ever been on as a manager. But I don't think think Plymouth will sack him I think they'll stick by him and I certainly think he's not going to take a job in League Two that's my personal opinion obviously Bradford are a massive club in League Two and shouldn't be near the bottom at all but I don't think Lowe would would take this challenge on got Sol Campbell Graham Alexander Jonathan Woodgate would any of them uh, tickle your fancy or do you uh, have you got your own pick for the job no I don't really fancy any of those names I've seen Bradford fans pie in the sky wanting Danny Cowley to come in. I don't think there's any chance of that one happening either. But for me, I think Bradford might need to go for someone a bit different and pick a manager from the league below they're in. You know, they've struggled with these top managers, the football league merry-go-round we've seen so many times. I think it's time for someone fresh to come in. And, and I think my pick for the job, looking down the names, very unlikely to happen, would be Halifax and, and sorry, Halifax manager Pete Wilde. I think he's done an absolutely brilliant job there. This season's not been so great. I think they're about 16th in the league so far. But the season before, what he did there, so he came in in the summer as the new manager. They didn't have any players. They barely had any money. And he led Halifax, who were favourites for relegation, to the playoffs. They lost in the playoffs, unfortunately. But he did an amazing job. He's only 35 years old. And I think if Bradford wants someone to come in and reinvigorate their side and give them a bit of playing style and a bit of identity again, somebody like Pete Wilde, who wouldn't cost too much money to take from Halifax, I think he'd be very interested in the job, unlike Cowley or potentially even Ryan Lowe, a big name like that. I think he could be a really good pick. It would be a risk, of course, they're bottom of the Football League or in the relegation zone, at least. But he could be the man to, to take them upwards and onwards. I can now plug an article for the site. Gab Sutton, one of our freelancers, has done an article on Pete Wilde. He's given us nine reasons why he should be appointed at Bradford. So check out the sackrace.com for that. But staying in League Two, another managerial change took place over the weekend. Barrow sacked David Dunn, who won only two of his 22 games. Simon, did this one come as a surprise or 
was it always going to happen? Because he, he took over from Ian Ever, who had such a good season with Barrow last season, leading them up to the division. Did he always have time against him, really, David Dunn? Yeah, tricky on this in terms of, I think, from an outsider's point of view, look at Barrow. They're outside the relegation zone at the moment in League Two. And, you know, David Dunn only got the job in the summer, coming into a difficult job, coming into League Two. Uh, it was a bit of a risk for Barrow to appoint him, I think. Um, but I don't think he really had the skills to get this job done, to be brutally honest. I really like David Dunn as a guy, but the results on the pitch were awful, as you mentioned. Two wins in 22 or 23 games, absolutely horrendous. One of those wins came against Bradford, who we've already mentioned have been a bit of a basket case this season. The other win was against Mansfield. And do you know, both of those teams were reduced to 10 men against Barrow. So David Dunn this season hasn't won a game when the opposition have had 11 men on the pitch. So I think, although it may seem harsh, they're outside the relegation zone. They've had a few draws. They're only just outside the relegation zone. I think performances on the pitch have been pretty atrocious and results are too not that great either. Two wins against 10 men. Yeah, yeah it's not pretty reading. I don't think they had much choice. Adrian Pennock was the original favourite, but the chairman has since ruled out a return for former managers. So we think that's off the cards now. We've got Scott Booth, perhaps a surprise uh, early favourite. The odds on screen at the moment. He's currently in charge of Glasgow City women, who has led to, I think, five uh, Scottish titles, a couple of cups. They went to the Champions League quarterfinals as well. They've just been knocked out of the Champions League, literally last night on Wednesday night. So this could be a good time to go in for him if they if they want to play for Dortmund and Aberdeen as a striker. Um, other names in the mix is Dina Maria. We spoke to Dina early in the week and he's very interested in a return to League Two. He's got a great track record of improving teams in trouble. So stay tuned to see how, see how that one pans out. Simon, we've got Paul Hurst, David Flitcroft, Graham Alexander, Sam Ricketts, loads of the usual contenders. But who is your pick for the Barrow job? I'm team Scott Booth. I want to see him get a go in League Two. I mean, I was looking at his record for Glasgow City women and he's absolutely smashed the rest of the league. He got the job in 2015, five titles in a row, an 81% win ratio. I know there's this thing where he's managing women, but it's the same game in my opinion. I want to see him get a job like this. He'd be cheap to employ for Barrow. He's a bit of a risk again, but he could do absolutely fantastically. He's achieved all he can with Glasgow City. I think that's important to note. You mentioned they're the Champions League. They can't compete with the likes of Lyon and Barcelona to win those sort of competitions financially. I think he would love a chance at managing in League Two. So I think it would be such an exciting thing to see someone from the women's game transfer over to the men's game in League Two. He'd be cheap to get. He's achieved all he can. And I think it would be absolutely brilliant for Scott Booth to get the Barrow job.